But I'm also fortunate because the decision was I want to run a business where I am available to take Harley to school every day. I'm available to pick her up from school every day. I'm, I'm there. I have time after school. We have time to hang out and play and do stuff and whatever it is. And I'm always there to, I'm always there and I'm available because Nikki's schedule is a rag with a full time job and she's, you know, she's working a lot of those times. But also the, the, the permission and the, not that, that I need permission as a parent, but sometimes we feel we do as men is I had permission to say, yeah, you can be, you can be that role as a dad. And that's okay. Like she's. Hi, Sunshine Moore here, creator of Fit Tech University and this podcast. We serve fitness instructors with technology solutions to run their virtual businesses through our digital course academy, our training lab, and our podcast, we bring education to you around the world. We believe that when we help you, you help others, and that is a mission we can all stand behind. We will help you with things like equipment, confidence on camera, how to set up your virtual studio, how to use marketing tools, what platforms you need, and we'll bring all of that to you here through our university courses, through our training lab, which is like a virtual fitness studio, and through our podcast with solo episodes and episodes with other people that are experts in things that we need to know. Thank you for listening, and we welcome and encourage your feedback. We cannot wait to serve you. So tell us who you are and tell us about the Knock Academy, and then we'll go from there. For sure. Well, um, thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, I'm Gareth Knock. welcome. I am the founder of the Knock Academy, uh, along with my amazing wife, who couldn't be with us today, but she is also the founder owner of the Knock Academy. And we are a online group-based training platform. We also offer some one-to-one based training as well, but predominantly our focus is our group-based work. We are a live and interactive platform. So 90% of what we do is fully interactive. We see everybody, they see us, and we're a bit more leaning on the coaching based side. So rather than a group fitness class style, we do have some of those predominantly it's more coached strength based metabolic conditioning, yoga, Pilates and such like. And yeah, we run a weekly schedule right from our home studio, which is literally just behind me over there. (laughs) And you put this together and started what a year, year and a half ago. Uh, Well, we started the process probably just over a year ago, uh, officially launched and brought everything into our platform on June 14th last year. So we're just coming up to a year. Okay, Uh, But yeah, it's kind of been in the, in the mix for a little bit longer than that. And we've been doing some online based stuff as well as, as a lot of people did come, you know, March, 2020. Yeah. And then we got everything up and rolling from there. What prompted you to go into virtual fitness other than the obvious pandemic gyms are closed, but you had to still decide to keep going in this industry. A hundred percent. We definitely had to make that big decision. And there was a few factors for me. I mean, I had 20, where am I now? A year of this. So 20, just over 20 years of in-person only. So that's okay. all I did for my entire career, personal training, group fitness, management, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I was in a leadership role when the pandemic began and it was just, it wasn't aligning after some reflection. So a big reason of doing it online was continue to serve the people we served to bring those experiences and, you know, really help to what we lean on a lot is educating our consumers beyond, you know, a standard fitness experience, right? And there's places for everything across the board. That was kind of our niche that we wanted to lean on. And I wanted to continue to serve those people. However, it was conflicting with my own personal purpose, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big advocate for dads and parenting from a male perspective standpoint, this is a huge part, another thing I'm massively passionate about. And I just felt like I could do more and I could be more involved. And my wife has a full-time job as well as running the business with me, as well as a lot of other things that we were joking about just earlier. (laughs) And it, it was, it was difficult because we've got a five-year-old and how do you manage that? How do I have a leadership role where I travel all over the country while she has a full-time job? And she got her job during the pandemic as well. It was a new role for her. So yeah, it was a really interesting transition, but quite honestly, it came down to a conversation one night at the dinner table where my four-year-old at the time, I said, do you remember what daddy did before the virus came? And she said, yeah. I said, you know, I'd go away and we talk on, you know, 
on the phone and you'd see me and I'd say bye-bye and I was away. And she said, yeah, I remember. Okay, good. I said, you know what I do now? And she's like, yeah, you go in the basement and you co- coach your clients, right? So I'm like, okay. I said, what do you want daddy to do? She's like, I want daddy to do that so I get to see you more. And that was basically the reason. Wow. That's amazing that you asked your child. What's your child's name? Harley. Harley. Okay. Yeah. Harley and my daughter, Skylar. My daughter's five as well. Just need to hang out. <laughs> We'll do a a trainer five-year-old class together where they're climbing and... Love it. This morning, my five-year-old asked me, Mommy, how do I use the microwave? I went, oh, "Oh, no. (laughs) I'm in the middle of... I saw your video. (laughs) I'm in the middle of deadlifts. Thank you. Deadlifts. And then I was doing something and she came in and went, oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. You saw the video. I touched her head and she freaked out. But... Yeah. uh, Yeah. Don't make their their hair sweaty. Oh, no. Oh, can't. No, not the princess. Okay, so pandemic hit, you were training in person, several different roles, personal training, group training, leadership positions. Pandemic hit, gyms closed, especially where you're at, especially where I'm at, I'm in Michigan. And you really got real and true with yourself, with what your values are and what you align with and how you want to serve and show up in the world. Yep. Did I get all that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you couldn't do it without your wife, Nikki, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I couldn't. I mean, from a, not only does she help me run the business and she's my sounding board for a lot of the stuff. Like I basically take after the day-to-day operations. She coaches on the schedule regularly and she's my sounding board for a lot of the stuff that, that we, the decisions we make. And so that's one part of it. But the bigger part of that was the twofold. Number one, the support for when I said, I think I'm just going to jack in my job. And it wasn't, it wasn't going in the direction that it was originally. It was changing and it didn't, you know, and I had some, it was quite stressful. I had some health issues with that. So that kind of contributed to the, um, to the decision. But she was just like, yeah, sure. You can quit your job, start a business. Why not? And that's, that's wow. been, you know, our, our life and our marriage. So I'm very fortunate. Yeah. But I'm also fortunate because the decision was, I want to run a business where I am available to take Harley to school every day. I'm mm-hmm. available to pick her up from school every day. I'm, I'm there. I have time after school. We have time to hang out and play and do stuff and whatever it is. And I'm always there to, I'm always there and I'm available because Nikki's schedule is erratic with a full-time job and she's, you know, mm-hmm. she's working a lot of those times, mm-hmm. but also the, the, the permission and the, not that, you, that I need permission as a parent, but sometimes we feel we do as men is I had permission to say, yeah, you can be, you can be that role as mm-hmm. a dad and that's okay. Like she can still be a great mom. And and a lot of the time, you know, I said I advocate a lot for dads is we don't get those opportunities sometimes because we're not given permission. And we're not allowed. You know, I said I advocate a lot for dads is we don't get those opportunities sometimes because we're not given permission and we're not allowed. So, you know, I advocate for that. Like, yeah, you have to speak up and you have to own that, but you have to make decisions as well where you're in an environment where you can. So it was definitely that. So I had that support. I've always had that support as a parent and as a dad. So it was awesome that it all kind of came together and it aligned in that kind of perfect schedule, if you like, of, you know, how the business runs around being a parent and, you know, doing life. Yes. You speak to so many people who may want to be doing what you're doing and will not give themselves permission. Or even if they've given themselves permission, they're doing it still with this 30 pound guilt rock that they drag everywhere. And I'm not saying I'm immune to it either. I'm in a similar position that my husband works a lot like a lot. But we agreed to that before we got married. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? He said, I'm going to do this. I said, well, I want to do that. And we said, yes, wherever this takes us, wherever that takes us. Well, I'm flexible. You're not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Take the kiddo to, to school. Husband needs to move for jobs. It doesn't matter where we do virtual fitness. We can move. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. that's another, uh, another, uh, another beauty of having uh, an online fitness business for sure. Yes. So let's dive into that, get into some particulars, because one of the biggest reasons I've started this podcast is to help other fitness instructors who maybe are sitting on the edge of their basement stairs thinking, I really wish I could teach in my basement, but I don't know how. Let's help them, right? Yeah. Let's help them. So talk to me about, I've seen your studio and your setup. You have a nice flooring I asked you about your your background, which is a sticky wall. I like that. I have the yeah. same basement wall. So thank you for that. Yeah. Talk to me about your camera. 
Oh, okay, so we use, uh, to be honest, just a regular webcam. I mean, it's high quality, mm-hmm. yeah, but you know, we're talking hundred. Hundred dollars Canadian. We bought it when we started kind of doing some online stuff, and it's actually been really, really beneficial uh, okay. to have to have just that piece of equipment, and not have to spend a huge amount of cash on it, and it does do really well. However, I do have a friend who is um, a videographer uh, and a director for lots of you know small motion pictures, videos, etc. So I asked the advice, and the advice was light to the room really well, and the camera doesn't really matter. So that was huge because I was about to drop hundreds of dollars on a brand new camera. She's like, no, just buy some lights, buy better lights and your camera will work. So we just stuck with it and it's been absolutely amazing. It is a 1080, is is an HD 1080 based camera. So for anyone looking at specs, we have that. And another little tip actually that I picked up recently was if you are running your stuff through a device, so if it's going through an app or you're also recording content in any capacity, I think 60% of consumers of online fitness are doing so through a mobile device. A mobile device does not stream very well above 1080. So you're actually in some ways probably spending a lot of money on something that's not going to be beneficial and you're going to have to reduce and compress the size of it anyway. So we just decided to stay with it. And like I said, just spend money on decent lighting and have that as an environment. So yeah, it's been, and I'm actually using it right now. It's the same camera I'm on this this thing with right now. So So the webcam is connected to your laptop. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And for those who don't know what 1080 is, because I know there there are some people out there, and I'm going to raise your hand for you. That's just the quality of filming. And you can set that based on, say, when you plug in the webcam, right? You'll come up with some settings on your laptop and you can set those. Am I right? I'm trying to make it, break it down really simply. (laughs) Yeah. And you can also edit that too. So if you have something that's high, so if you have a 4k camera, you can set it to 1080. So if you are doing that and you're recording content, be sure to adjust it because you'll get Mm -hmm. uh, a better quality of video that transfers onto those smaller screens and onto, you know, people that are streaming them directly from like their data and stuff. But yeah, you can adjust that. And if you're using software as a, if you're using a middle, a middle point software, you can also normally set the rating in there as well. Do you use a software? I, I don't, but I literally have the tab open on my laptop because I've been doing some research on it uh, and it's mainly for recording content, but I'm trying to find something that covers the basis, something where I can stream podcasts live, where I can do presentations for the education side of the business. So we're just trying to find something, but the uh, the option we have and I've had recommended is ManyCam, which is a, uh, a software which is really reasonably priced and you can use multiple videos. So if you're streaming from multiple angles, we don't do that with what we do. We just do a single Single camera, mm-hmm. but you can do multiples. I think you can run up to like 50 cameras or something. So it can be used in a professional environment. But yeah, it's just a middle point. So you can pump everything into it and then you can have lift different camera feeds and you can edit in there and you can basically do everything. So it's a whole suite of of um services. M-A-N-Y-C-A-M. Is yep, that right? That's right. Okay. Many cam. Good, great tip. Where did you get your lights from? The lights, Amazon. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're just regular box lights. So yes. search a box yeah. light. Yeah, they came fully equipped with a stand, uh, a yeah. cover and bulbs. And actually, I don't have the stands because of the space. They're actually mounted from the ceiling. Oh, nice. Uh, but I just, yeah, I just got some, some yeah. stuff from the DIY store and mounted them. So they just hang down and they're permanent. Um, so they don't get in the way and then you don't kick them over either when you're moving around. That's true. I'm going to yeah. grab mine and you tell me if this is similar to what you... Yes, it looks exactly like that. Okay. Yeah, what brand are they? This is, well, it's from Amazon, and the brand is Neer, N-E-E-W-E-R. Yeah, yeah, they do a lot of audio-visual stuff from Amazon. I think ours are, I can't remember the brand, but yeah, I mean, they were, it probably cost me about 100 bucks probably, Mm -hmm. to buy the lighting. And then I also put um, LED strips on the ceiling as well, rather than the regular lights. So it's got like three strip lights and two box lights in there. Yeah. And I, I can confirm that your studio lighting is phenomenal. Thank you. Yes. The angle of your camera is is great because it's a little bit higher than you and you can see your full body and you can move side to side, but you're able to still walk in close enough to make that connection with someone on the other end, right? And you called me out by name and I thought, that he sees me, right? He sees me over here. Get yeah. lower on those squats. Okay. Yeah. Let's that's go. It. Well, there's, there's so two things. Yes, that's a really useful tool, 100%. So there's two things I'll, I'll, I'll share there. Number one is we have a large screen. We actually had a TV lying around the house that we weren't using. 
mm-hmm. and we just have one in like our kind of lounge area and there's no other TVs in the house, but we had another one for some reason. So I actually mounted that from the ceiling too. So the screen is, it's probably five, six times the size of my laptop screen. So the coaching element of what we do in that uniqueness really relies on that because we can actually see people. And if I'm further back in the studio, I can still see people. I don't even have to be close. So there's a little tip and I'll, I'll let you into a little, uh, a little secret behind the scenes secret, the angle of the camera. Uh, I stumbled across that amazing angle by accident. And the reason being is because our basement does not have a finished ceiling. So it is angled at the exact perfect position where you can't see the wooden studs from the ceiling and you can only see the decorated wall that we have. So, and then I was like, wow, this is like the perfect angle. So it was totally by chance. And if I tilt the camera up, I'd give away the, uh, the, the facade that it looks like <laughs> a professional studio. So. Yes. Uh, I have the same ceiling as well. <laughs> I stapled, um, curtains and sheets up there just to get something up there. My basement space is not as large as yours. So I was having trouble with getting an angle that was both wide enough, um, but I guess high enough. And at times you can't see my ceiling, unfortunately. It is what it is. Yeah, it was a lot of tweaking and playing around. We ended up deciding to put it on a tripod and we actually have the camera on a tripod. Okay. And it's on top of our washing machine because it had to be further enough back to get that shot. Right. So you have to kind of set it up. So yeah, again, ruin the facade. It's my laptop plugged into the screen, plugged into the camera on top of our washing machine. I think I've seen a picture of that on yeah. on your Instagram. It's so real. I think people love behind the scenes, truly. So let yeah. me ask you a question on behind the scenes. What are you doing right before one of your classes starts? Oh, wow. Good question. Um, I would say probably using double checking through programming first and foremost Mm -hmm. i typically do i don't do that very well on the spot so it's always in advance Mm -hmm. for me i am normally doing that and then probably posting something on social media because if i've got five or ten minutes i'm a bit of the over preparer so i come down and i'm like start the session and i'm like a bit like when you teach a live class and no one gets there until bang on the minute it starts and you're just hanging around (laughs) so i'm like so i put the music on put my headphones in i'm like so what I'm going to do, I'm like, well, I'll make a quick social media post. So I'm just trying to fill those gaps in the day, like those little minutes where I can just share a quick story, do a quick behind the scenes video or a selfie or whatever it might be, mm-hmm. just to kind of fill that spot. And, you know, as you know, you run a business and you've got kids at home and it's chaotic is you have to squeeze in that social media post in the three minutes you have. So that's typically what I'm doing. Or if I'm super organized, I'm probably rolling my calves or my quads or something in the studio. <laughs> now you're getting professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is your, Harley is your five-year-old, is she at home when you teach your first class? She is typically waking up. She's around and about, yeah. So she's she's okay. normally up about between 6.30 and 7. So yeah, okay. she's home. And Nikki is not a morning person. So they hang out upstairs and they're like, whatever. They may be getting breakfast. They may just be getting ready for school. She starts pretty early. So I only have about half an hour between our first session ending and then leaving the house to get her to school. So it's quite tight. So yeah, she's normally hanging around and sometimes she's here on other sessions as well. I mean, <laughs> the last month she's been to school about five days because March break, stomach flu, COVID, we've all had that in the last month in our house. So it's been a bit, um, a bit crazy, but the nice thing is because we run this business is we're able to still continue to run the business even with those things going on. I was very fortunate. I didn't really have any symptoms when I, when everyone was unwell. So I carried on teaching. Okay. But I'm going to worry because you're in the house where everyone else is kind of here. So yeah, she's <laughs> often here. She's upstairs playing or she's, uh, you know, doing some activity up there or whatever. A lot of the time when we're, when we're teaching. When you're teaching. Does she know she can or cannot come down when daddy's teaching? She doesn't typically, she, it's not off limits. Like she'll come down sometimes. She, she made an appearance on her birthday a couple of months back, uh, in, in full party dress tiara oh, yeah. birthday badge. Cause she had to come down and show everybody my birthday, look what I'm wearing. And she was fully committed at seven in the morning to this outfit. So <laughs> she does come down. Yeah. She comes down and plays. Everyone knows she'll say hi sometimes. Yeah. She hangs around sometimes and we'll do a few reps and a few here and there. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, she's, she's a, she's allowed, but she typically doesn't anymore. It's a bit of the novelty's worn off for sure. Sure, sure. Okay, we've talked about why you got into virtual fitness. We've talked about camera and we've talked about lighting. We talked about background. What about mixer and microphone? 
Yeah, this is a this is a good one. And I'm actually right in the process of it. It's, businesses continue to evolve. So I'm actually looking at some other options for this, mainly for recorded content as well as the live sessions. The live sessions we do, we just use a Bluetooth headset for that. So the brand we use are Jabra uh, 75s, and they are an in-ear with an inbuilt microphone. And the microphone is pretty good quality. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, we've just been using that. We did start with a wired mic. Uh, It tends to just get in the way and they're annoying. So I didn't want to (laughs) use it in 20 years of wearing one. It's a pain in the butt. So we we went with that originally. It wasn't so bad, but I found it cut out a lot because there's a lot of concrete and there's a lot of metal down there. It didn't do very well for the sound. Oh. Yeah. So that wasn't great. So then we went to the in-ear, which is great when you're coaching. If I'm just talking and we're having a conversation, much like I am when I'm coaching, as we are speaking now, they're mm-hmm. really good quality. The problem with the microphone on the Bluetooth stuff is it's not adjustable. So it just picks up at one volume mm-hmm. and you can't do anything with it. So I have a lot of, I have a deeper voice than Nikki has. So it sounds very different. So when you're recording content, it doesn't translate so well. So yeah, we're currently looking at a mixer and a head mic option for, uh, especially the more active stuff. If I'm doing, Nikki's doing yoga and she's up and down off the floor and she's trying to record content, it cuts mm-hmm. in and out a little bit with the Bluetooth. So yeah, I think for a on-demand stuff that we record and you know we have in our video library, we're looking at headset mixer so we can really balance it out. If we're just playing background music and we're coaching, uh, just in-ear, headbutt, earbud, because it's super quick, super easy. Sure, sure. Sort of like the AirPods, similar idea. Yeah, exactly the yes. same, yeah. I agree about the headset. I, I still have mine. I bought my own in, I want to say 2013. It still works, so I refuse to buy another one. But you're right. This thing is getting old, and I know there's better quality out there. So I talked to my friend. I did a podcast with him. He runs a sound production company. So he's my, what do I get for this? Yeah. And he's kind of got me turned on to the road. I think it's called Roadcaster or Roadster, Road something. Um, so I'm going to look into that. And if I get it, I'll let you know if I like it. Yeah, for sure. And it always interests me as a, as a I host our, our business podcast and also a lifestyle podcast. So audio and visual is, you know, the, it's always on my mind as well in other aspects. So I'm yeah, looking at headsets. I think that's a good option for most. I also have been put onto the idea of boundary microphones. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but basically you have a microphone in front of you on the mm-hmm. floor or okay. mounted, and then you have one behind you and you can also mount them above you. So this is kind of what you'd use where you couldn't have an earpiece or a mic. Uh, and this has been quite successful for some of the bigger brands that are doing on demand based stuff and streaming mm-hmm. because it never, it's designed to pick you up wherever you are. Um, and it's kind of got like that spread pattern. So we've looked at that as an option as well. So we don't physically have to wear anything, but it's hard when you're coaching because you're in and out to the camera, et cetera. So again, for on demand, it would be really good for live stuff. Not so good. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Keep us up to date on that. Yeah. That's interesting. And then the mixer, I found another one this morning at Sweetwater, by the way, I'll send it to you. Yeah. I know you had asked me about that one from AV now that I found. I have one from AV now that's bigger but it's not portable. Sometimes I teach at my tennis club and I don't want to bring my home mixer and I would sound a whole lot better if I did. Yeah. It's, it's heavy, right? So I, I was looking for something compact that I could bring with me. And that's, that's what I found the AV now one. And then I found another one at Sweetwater. What I understand, and I'm still not an expert. I will never complain to <laughs> claim to be an expert in sound. Um, but I'm a researcher And what I understand is you have to have an input for your sound, your music, and your microphone so that they do mix together instead of one overpowering the other. And like you talked about, you can control each of them, right? Yeah, especially if you've got multiple people teaching from your environment too, Mm -hmm. because that makes a big difference um, in regards to, you know, the output of the mic and how you adjust that if you can't you know, adjust the volume there and you can only adjust the music, it can be difficult. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely something we're looking at as we uh, do a bit more production stuff on our on demand. So yeah, I'll, I'll keep you up to date and I'll make sure I post stuff on social media of whatever we get as well. Likewise. Okay. Let's move into more business marketing and branding. Talk to us about who you serve, how you serve them, what problem you solve and what your promise deliverable is. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so we'll start with who you serve. Who you don't have serve. to remember all of those. <laughs> yeah, that's a, who, do you, that's, who do you serve? 
beyond my capacity. That's why I have yeah. a whiteboard with all the workouts on because I can't yeah. remember stuff. Um, okay, who we said? The, we... I had the paper taped to that light that you're showing me. I don't oh, yeah. know if you saw it. <laughs> Tape yeah. the workout to the light. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, there's whatever you need to do. Yep. Um, so who do we serve? We serve busy parents that want to move more and feel great. People like us, uh, that's, you know, our market. And do we have people outside of that? Yes. Um, although we speak to those, that market of people in our marketing, because we know, we know what it's like to try and fit in workouts with kids running around and pets in the way. And when we don't have the time to, you know, get up, at, get up, get ready, drive to the gym, do a workout, come home or do that in your lunch break or whatever it might be, you know, that two hour pocket that you might need. Mm -hmm. We take that and we, you know, we, we talk to saving people time, but we can get you moving more and feeling great and saving time in your day at the same time. So that's what we do is like, here's a 25 minute workout, a 30 minute workout at lunchtime that you can do. You can literally close down your browser with your email, open up, you know, our app, start the workout, do it right there by your desk and then get straight back to work. Perfect. Hi, FitPro, Sunshine here, and I'm here to tell you about a special topic seminar that I've created just for you if you need confidence on camera. If that is stopping you from growing your virtual fitness business, then I want to help you. I'm offering a special topic seminar called Five Ways to Improve Your Confidence on Camera, and this serves fitness instructors who want to be more confident in their teaching. It solves the problem of having low confidence on camera, and the promise I give to you is that at the end of this, there will be one video that you have created that you are confident in releasing. Here are the details. There are five trainings that you will receive, and they are on demand. You watch them anytime you want. You will start the training on day one, and you will post in our Facebook group that you have started. Each day has homework. So you'll do your homework and then there'll be a way to let me know that your homework is done. And as the professor, I will give you feedback on each of your homework assignments. That's sort of the live piece to it. So if you are interested in improving your confidence on camera, again, my promise to you is that not only will I help you with that, but at the end of this special topic seminar, you will have one video created that you are confident in releasing. You can find this training at fittechuniversity.com slash confidence. And little sneak peek side note, there'll be an option in there for a special PDF that you can download for equipment that you'll need for your virtual fitness business. And then of course, if you need even more services, There will be an option in there if you want to book a one-on-one paid consultation. I really appreciate you sharing this with other fit pros because that's how we grow and learn from each other. And I can't wait to see you inside the training for confidence on camera. How did you find these busy parents who want to get a workout in quickly in between their dog and their cat and their kid? Yeah, good question. I think a a bit of luck. (laughs) <laughs> to be honest, but I think because our network, you know, the people we've coached in person, the mm-hmm. people that have been in our environments, the clients we've had, we just, you, I think you just attract those people, right? You attract people that you connect with, that you have common ground with and, and being a busy parent managing life. There was a lot of people in our network already. So those people just automatically were like, yeah, that's, you, you're the same as me. I get it. That's what mm-hmm. I want to do. And then really just, you know, reaching out using social media, using community pages on social media, speaking to that, you know, going the places we go. So whenever I go anywhere, I'm like, yeah, I really like this coffee shop. Like everyone comes and hangs out in their kit. I'm like, great flyers, right? This is where I like to go. I like to go to this place or I don't know, wherever it might be. 40 somethings with kids, they hang out in certain places. Wherever I hang out, I'm going to try and market to those people in some way, shape or form. So we try and do community stuff and, and find people that way, as well as, you know, just just generally our network and people we know. Here ends part one of two. We keep these 20 to 30 minutes to keep your attention. And of course, we want it to be engaging and full of value. Part two will release in a future episode. But for now, check the show notes to get a link to the Knock Academy, as well as connecting with both Gareth and FitTech on Instagram. You can find Gareth on the 
Knock Academy on Instagram, and you can find me, Sunshine, on Fit Tech on Instagram. So head on over there, connect, DM us if you have questions, and can't wait to release part two in a near future episode. Please go connect with us on Instagram at Fit Tech University. That is the best place to reach us. You can, of course, click the link in bio to get other help, like a resource on how to choose a virtual platform to put your business on. We've done all the research for you on comparing prices and other features. And then lastly, we're a university. We teach. We teach courses. We teach courses on how to set up your virtual studio, how to build a marketing plan for your studio, and then how to build your confidence on camera. Those are the three main courses. You can find all of that in the link in bio on our Instagram. So please connect with us. Of course, we're putting content on there all the time and we look forward to building our relationship with you because when we build our relationship, we build that know, like, and trust factor. And that's a huge part of marketing, which of course we teach you. Thanks so much, friend. Go connect with us at Fit Tech University on Instagram.